Hello, Nick here with Innovative Knowledge, and I'm going to be showing you around the 2009 Mastering Series of Educational Software from Weekly Reader. After watching this video, you and your students should be up and running, taking full advantage of all the great new features the 2009 version has to offer. This video covers the elementary school, middle school, and high school versions of the Mastering Series, so depending on the grade level you purchased, your menu may look different and will have different titles in the right-hand menu available to you. Well, I know we're all eager to start learning, so let's begin our tour with the main menu. You see here on the right-hand side, we have this scrolling menu. In here is where you'll find all of the titles included in your Weekly Reader Mastering Series Suite. All of the titles that first load up in here are for the Mac and PC operating systems. And whether you're on a Mac OS, Windows Vista, or Windows XP, each title will run and look very similar. For this tour, we'll be on the Mac OS X. Now that we know where to find our titles, we can go down here to the tabs. You'll see the top tab is the one loaded already, which is the Mac and PC titles. The middle tab is the iPod compatible tab, which will load up titles that are compatible for the Apple iPod. Clicking on this tab will load up all the iPod titles on this disk. You'll see them all come up right here on the right hand menu. The bottom tab is the Tests and More tab, where you will find just that, printable tests and workbooks, as well as audiobooks for listening to the audio-only version of some of the titles. This is also where you will find Progress Report, which keeps track of progress being made within compatible titles. Let's take a look at one of the types of titles that is compatible with Progress Report right now by going back to the Mac and PC Titles tab. You will see here at the top, we have a group of learning system titles from science to history and literature. All of these titles run using a multi-sensory engine developed exclusively for the weekly reader learning system. Only these titles that use this interface will keep track of themselves in progress report. Let's click one here and take a look at how it works. As you can see here, after the introduction, we have many options available to us. But the first things you will notice is the main display located here and the information box located down here. When loading up a presentation, you will see either pictures or video displayed up in the screen, as well as text down here. You will also hear all of the text you see in this box from your speakers. This is a great example of the multi-sensory approach to learning, because some students learn better by reading, and others by listening, some by seeing examples like above. Each title comes equipped with a built-in Merriam-Webster dictionary and concise encyclopedia, to help you along in your learning. I'll show an example of that soon. As the presentation progresses automatically, the text will change as the narration is read aloud. The picture or video will also change in the display above. In between here, you see the playback controls, including the play pause button, stop, skip page forward and backwards, the skip chapter forward and backwards, and over here on the right hand side, you'll find the rest of your controls. Zoom will zoom in on the picture currently being shown. Search will allow you to do a search of either the dictionary, encyclopedia, or the presentation. This is a great tool if you can't remember where you saw something the last time you watched this interactive presentation. The quiz button allows you to practice the questions included in the title, and the test button is the real thing. The results are recorded in progress report. We'll take a look at this in a second. The volume button adjusts the level of the narration and music being heard. The print button will print the current picture and text in the boxes on the left. And finally, the dictionary and encyclopedia buttons will bring up their respective databases for quick access. You probably noticed the color words on the left here. Clicking on a colored word will bring up either the dictionary, if the word is green, or the encyclopedia, if the word is blue. This is a great feature to allow you quick access to definitions and explanations of what's going on in the presentation. A very cool feature. You can also use the tabs here on the right to navigate through the title and access the table of contents, save the text from the presentation in a text file, or even find out how to get a hold of us if you have any technical problems. Let's take a look at the quiz and tests again. Clicking on the test button brings up a window giving us a selection of tests for the title we are watching. We can choose just one specific chapter to be tested on, or the entire set by clicking on the first one at the top. Remember that this test is being kept track of, so if you think you want to do a practice version of these questions, click the quiz button instead. 
In the quiz section, you can not only practice the questions, but it will also tell you why your answers were either correct or incorrect when you are taking the quiz. It is a fantastic way to hone your knowledge of the titles, as well as sharpen your memory and understanding of the subject. So now that we know the difference between the quiz and test button, let's begin by choosing a section. And then we click Start and take a look at the test screen. All of the tests are multiple choice, and will have from either two to six answers depending on the question. You will see the question up at the top here, and if there's related media to the question, you will find it here on the right side. You then choose your answer to the question by clicking the letter next to what you think is the right choice. When you select your answer, the current question will be replaced by the next question in the test. You can use the buttons down here to either zoom into the picture if available, go back to the prior question to review or change your answer, and if you're having trouble on a question, you can click the next button to skip ahead one question. At any time during the test, you can click the exit button to leave the test. But beware that this test is being recorded, and leaving before you finish doesn't change that. It will record your score and the time for the test as it is when you quit. Remember, if you want to just practice, use the quiz mode instead. So, now that we finished our test on chapter one, as we click the last answer, we're taken to our immediate results page. Here, you will not only be able to see how many correct answers out of the questions you got, but also what answer you chose, what was the correct answer, and how much time you spent on each individual answer. This is a great assessment tool to use to help find where you need more work for the title. From here, you can either hit close, or you can print out this results page to keep and show as a report card for your accomplishment. After we're done taking a look at our scores, we can close this out and go back to our learning system title. Then just hit the X up here to close out your viewing of the presentation. Now that we're back in our menu, let's check out how our mathematics titles work. We'll use multiplication as our example. Clicking the title in the menu loads it right up from the DVD for us, and you can see we have multiple topics covered here in this one. Quite a few, actually. Most of our math titles will have this same type of option for multiple topics. We're just starting, so we'll start out with basic multiplication to see how the engine works here. If we click the wrong title, we can choose to go back at any time by clicking up here, but we clicked what we wanted, so let's go ahead and load up the lesson. Here we have a neat little interface for you and your students to interact with. All of our math titles use this same type of interface, but some of the graphics and color change depending on the title. It's pretty basic and easy to use once you know your way around. On the right side here, we have the next button, which will start our lesson from this screen, and it will advance us through the entire lesson at our own pace. Anytime we feel ready, we just click this button here to take us to the next screen. Clicking the button labeled Previous during the presentation will take us back a step, just in case we want to review what we've seen. The Menu button will take us back to the Multiplication Topics menu we saw earlier, and the Help button will let you know how to get a hold of us in case you need an extra hand. Finally, the exit button takes us all the way out to our original menu we saw at the beginning of this tutorial. Now that we know what these do, let's start by hitting next and see how it works. There we go. We are now on the first page of this lesson. What you aren't hearing, because I'm the one talking now, is the voice of our student and our teacher talking. Down here you will see a dialogue that's being heard over your speakers. This is good because some students learn better by reading the text and others like to listen. When you load up the lesson, you'll hear the dialogue for yourself. Now that we've seen the first page, in order to advance, just hit the next button to go to the next page, which will then load up a new line of dialogue or instructions down at the bottom and change the scene here in our main presentation window. The screen doesn't advance until hitting the next button. This allows our students to learn at their own pace and let them discuss and think about what they saw with their teacher, parent, or even learning partners. Really cool. Again, when we're ready, just hit the next button to see the next set of multimedia here in this lesson. Now that you know how to use this interface, you can use all of our math titles here. You'll see they all work the same, even if they look a little different. You can spend more time learning and less time on clunky, hard to use windows, which is very cool. Let's head back to our main menu now and take a look at some other cool stuff included here, like the videos we have at the bottom of our list. These titles aren't like the others. These are videos we can sit back, relax, and enjoy. Clicking one of these, like learning to use a calendar, will bring up our video player here. The standard controls like pause, rewind, and fast forward are available 
if we want to take a quick break, review what we saw, or jump ahead to our favorite parts. Just hit the X to close it out when you're done. Now we can take a look at these other tabs. The middle tab loads up titles we can use on our iPod. We'll see we have videos here we can take on the go. It's pretty easy to move them into our iPods, but we need to make sure we have an iPod that can play videos first. If we have one of these, you want to make sure your settings in iTunes look like mine. We have these two boxes on the bottom here. Manually manage music and videos and enable disk use. I have them checked. This will allow our installer to interact with our iPod. If they aren't checked, just check them and hit apply. This button will show up in the bottom right over here. Back in our menu, we choose to install just one of the video titles by clicking on one of them or all of them by clicking here where it says iPod videos. Let's do that to get them all in there in one shot. You'll see down here in this handy iPod install bar, we got an upload button now. On Windows operating systems, all we have to do is click the upload button and the process will happen automatically. When it's done, a pop-up will let us know that we're good to go. On the Mac, we just have one extra step to help them find our titles. When you click upload, we'll be asked to find the folder the videos are in on our disk. But luckily, right down here, it tells us where they are. So it'll only take a second or two to find them. Just navigate to the DVD-ROM, and then the folders list it, and hit the choose button to start the process. When done, it'll let us know. It should only be a few minutes before we can learn on the go. Also, remember the learning system titles we looked at earlier? Well, most of those are available as well for use on either the iPod Nano or iPod Video. You'll see we have one of them right here, and it's got multiple options, unlike the iPod Videos we looked at. You're given the option of either installing the presentation, the questions that are included in the test section, or both at the same time. These are installed just like the video titles. One important thing to note, though, Due to the limitation in files allowed on the iPod, you can only install one set of questions at a time. Whenever you choose to install a new set of questions, it will overwrite the previous set. However, you can install as many presentations as your iPod will fit. So you can always have new content with you on your iPod Nano or iPod Video. This is a great feature, exclusive to the Weekly Reader Learning System titles. Remember, if you want to see what titles are available for the iPod on your Mastering Series disc, just click the iPod tab if you have one. After installing, you will find the iPod videos in your video folder of your iPod. And the learning system titles can be found in your iPod menu by navigating to the Extras menu and then Notes. It may take a few minutes to load up the titles when you add new ones to it. Finally, in our third tab, it's the Tests and More menu, where we can find just that. We see we can register our software with the fine companies who brought us this suite. Make sure you connect it to the internet for this though. We also have a really cool workbook and printable tests. Let's take a look at one of these. We'll use multiplication since we just took a look at the basic multiplication lesson. Clicking on the subject brings up a list of quiz sheets we can print out. Just choose the quiz you want to take, like so, and then hit the print button up here to send it to your printer. There are also answer sheets we can print out here so we can compare our work and see how well we did on the test. Tests can be hard sometimes, but with all this great new software here and some determination, I'm sure we'll be math whizzes in no time flat, and we'll have the tests to prove it. Back in our menu now, let's take a preview of this great new workbook we can print out. As you can see, it says it's a PDF file, and on the Windows Vista and XP platforms, we'll need the Adobe Reader from adobe.com to open it up. Chances are you already have it, but if you don't, it's a free and safe program, so you can grab it anytime you're ready. On the Mac, it will open up using Preview, a built-in program. Then, we can just use our printer to take these with us and learn at our desks, during lunch, or in our spare time. Very neat. Back in this menu, we will also find the Progress Report program. Let's open that up and take a quick look. On the left hand side here we will find a list of titles we have opened up and watched. This side on the left keeps track of every presentation we have looked at so far that uses the learning system engine we looked at earlier. Clicking on the titles reveals not just how long we have spent watching each chapter in the presentation but also how many times we have looked at that chapter. This is an excellent way to keep track of what you need to study more of 
and it also promotes good study habits through accountability. On the right side is where we'll find the results of the tests we have taken so far. I took a test earlier with you and we can take a look at the results by clicking on the title. You'll see a very detailed list of the date and time we took the test, what attempt number it was, and by clicking the attempt number here, we can see a detailed account of the results we saw earlier. And we can even print out a copy of it in case we didn't earlier when we took the test. As you can see, Progress Report is a very powerful tool when it comes to keeping track of what you have done in the learning system titles. Anytime you open up one of these titles, it will record it in here. This is one of the best features also exclusive to the Weekly Reader Learning System. Back to just a few more things found in this menu, one of which is another way to take the test provided in the Learning System titles. For a majority of the titles, you will find printable versions of the test that are recorded in Progress Report. These are also PDF files. You can open up the questions or answer sheets and send them directly to your printer. This is great for simulating the environment of a classroom where you would likely take a test with pen and paper. And finally, the audiobook versions of a majority of these titles are available right under audiobooks. This is an MP3 version of the titles if you just feel like listening along instead of opening up the whole presentation. You can also download the MP3s of the title to your computer so you can take with you on the go in case you have a different portable media player other than the iPod. Also included in every mastering series is a great study guide which includes a lot of tips on getting the most out of your students time in and out of the classroom. This is a must read for parents and students alike. So that covers many of the great features of your mastering series software for 2009. As you can see there are a lot of tools to take advantage of here. There are many ways you can utilize this software to achieve the best results for your student. We hope to provide you with all the best options for helping get better grades, reinforce good study habits, and keep track of the progress being made within the learning system titles. You can always come back to this video if you need to remember how to use any of the software included. So take your time and be sure to take advantage of all the learning system has to offer. Until next time, have fun. Goodbye. <laughs>